Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. The theme this month is tiny accessories. And at the time of this video, there are two die sets that fit that bill, tiny accessories one and tiny accessories two. Now those little accessories are sized to fit on all of our little animal dies, but for my challenge card, I decided to use them instead on one of our charm sets. So I dressed up the sweet treats charms. And you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. So first I'll work on my sweet treats charms. And what's nice is that you can cut everything at once. I'm using a Sizzix Big Shot, but you can use any machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die. Speedy fast, I'm going to get these charms assembled. Now, if you'd like to see a slower version of this process, you can watch the assembly video for the sweet treats charms. You can always find those assembly videos on the product page on our website. So you just go in and look for Sweet Treats Charms and the video will be right there on the product page. Or you can go to the YouTube channel and then you'll find them under a playlist for all of our die sets. Now before I accessorize those Sweet Treats Charms, let me show you another set that I've already made for the project. So I made a popsicle and put a monocle and a top hat and then just drew in the eyes and the mustache. And those were done with Tiny Accessories 1. And I stuck with Tiny Accessories 1 for the other three charms in that first set. So I just added glasses and bow ties. And when I needed face parts, you know, like eyes and mouths, I just drew them on with a black pen. And for this next set, I'll use both sets. So I'll use some of the pieces out of Tiny Accessories 1, but then also some out of Tiny Accessories 2. And I'll start first with a superhero ice cream cone. On the superhero cape, it's real easy. You just place your item over the cape and then fold in the two little triangles at the top and glue them down. And then the superhero mask at the top. And then I'll just finish out by using a black pen to draw in a couple of eyes. For the popsicle, I'm going back to Tiny Accessories 1 because there's a little pirate outfit and I thought that would be perfect for a pirate popsicle. And I just found the easiest was to put the accessories on and then add whatever facial features you needed. So in this case, just one eye and a little smile. Back to Tiny Accessories 2 for the watermelon. And there is this little purse die that works perfectly with double-sided paper because you fold over the flap to make the flap of the purse. So it's really great when you have double-sided pattern paper where you've got a good coordinating color on the other side. And then I just hold that little flap down with a spot of glue. I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. And we do sell both of those items on our website. And then I like to add just a little rhinestone to kind of complete the look. There is a pillbox hat die in that Tiny Accessories 2 set that does have an optional stencil feature. So I've just gone in with a white pen to highlight the bow at the top of the hat. So then I just glued all those pieces to the watermelon and finished her out with a nice pair of spectacles. And I just used the seeds that I had already put on the watermelon as the eyes and then just connected a couple of them with a line to make the mouth. And then on my final donut charm, the heart-shaped glasses from two and the bow tie from one. Today's card is going to be an alteration of the charm accordion, and I tend to always come back to this die set. It works perfectly with the charms, and it has a lot of versatility. You are always choosing your number of pages, so you can make a quick two-page card, maybe you're making a three-page card, or you can just keep on going. So here's one that Jessica Tumlinson made for me. It has 16 pages. But it's also an easy die to alter. So for instance, you can watch a video that will show you how to assemble it as a staggered accordion. And I've done that in a few different styles. And then you can also stagger that accordion, but do it with rectangles instead of squares. So just lots of versatility with this die set. And another reason it goes great with all of our add-on charm sets is because of this die here, which will cut four paper jump rings. And those look particularly realistic when you cut them out of a metallic cardstock. So the first thing I'm going to do is switch to our squares crosshatch die set and I'm nesting together dies number three and four to make some nice crosshatch frames. And those happen to fit the charm accordion just perfectly. And then on the charm accordion set, I'll use the big page die itself to cut twice out of red cardstock. Now my alteration is going to be to turn the pages themselves from rectangles into squares. So I want to put the top edge of the accordion at three and a quarter 
on my trimmer and then just trim off the excess cardstock at the bottom. And I'll do that on both page sets. Now there is a hinge die that's included in the Charm Accordion for connecting page sets together, or another option that I'll use today is just to take that leftover cardstock, cut a piece that's three and a quarter inches high, and then I'll need to trim the width down to about three quarters to fit it between the page sets. So a paper hinge like this is a great choice if you just plan on hiding it behind the page sets so that you don't want the decorative look of the hinges, you just want to get the two page sets connected together. So after folding that in half up the middle mountain style, then I just use a strong adhesive to attach that to each of my page sets as a hidden hinge. That center fold will be a mountain in the finished card, but the other two folds, the ones in the middle of each page set, will be valley folds. And those have been scored by the die, so it's just a matter of finding the folds. I chose a rather heavy cardstock, so I'm going to reinforce those folds with a bone folder. And I do love those thicker 100 pound cardstocks for accordions. And for my interior decoration, I will add those square frames that I cut earlier. And it just so happens that they fit perfectly on the charm accordion. The best way to line them up is to look at the inner edge of the frame and just have a little bit of your base color showing. So you'll see how easy it is to line those up. I also want to make some frames to fit my pivoting square. So I'll use the charm accordion die set for that, but I'm going to nest in the second smallest square from the squares crosshatch. I'll use some temporary removable tape on all four sides to really hold that in place. That way I'll be able to use that die repeatedly so that I can cut four frames and that small die will not move. And since I'm only looking for the rounded square frame itself, I only needed a piece of cardstock that was big enough to cover that area. And then right there on the pivot points, I can go in with my scissors and snip out that frame. So I'm just placing that frame on my project for a second so that I can see where the jump rings, the little paper jump rings on my charms will hit that frame. And then I just mark that with a paper piercer so that I can add holes to the frame and be able to weave those paper jump rings through. And I do need to just make sure that I make those holes large enough that those paper jump rings can go through them. Now that's really just decorative for this particular project. I'm not relying on the paper jump rings to hold the charm in place. I'm just weaving it through, figuring out a place for my watermelon lady and actually tacking her down with glue. Same thing with my popsicle man. That way they won't overlap each other as the card is opened and closed. They'll just be in sort of a finished anchored position. I've used the stitched square from the Charm Accordion to cut out of white cardstock as a backer for my frames. And then when I add my frames, I'm going to use pop dots. I was initially thinking this would be a birthday card, but as I was looking through my stamps, I saw this darkroom door set, brushed sentiments, that had a hello that really looked like the absolute perfect size to fit the Charm Accordion, so I used that instead. And then I'm just going to cut that out with that same stitched square that comes in the Charm Accordion set. And then just one of those red frames on pop dots. And then I just repeated that same process to add my other large charms on pages two and four. In the Charm Accordion die set, there's a little piece that you normally use between the pivoting squares to connect them. But for today's project, I wanted to show another option, which is to use ribbon. So I turn the piece over and I add strips of a red liner tacky tape across the center of each pivoting square. So just a quick check to see which is page one, and it's there on the left, so that's where I will start with my ribbon. I peel up the liner on that piece of tape so that's sticky, and I just want to leave myself a little tail out to the left side there. And then the ribbon needs to go across the front of the album and then back behind the second square. And then it will stay behind the album between the second two squares, but then go in front again between squares three and four. Now I can turn over to the back side and work on the second square. And what I want to do is get this album into a nice viewing position so that I can see how much slack I want to leave between the two squares. And I decided on about a half an inch. I did not measure it, I'm just going by eye, and that is completely up to you because you could leave more space between or even less. It really doesn't matter, you just need to be consistent. 
So turning over to the back of the album, I can lift the ribbon out of the way to get access to my tape, make that sticky. And then once again, I wanna make sure that I'm consistent so that I have about the same distance between the squares as I did between the first two. So about a half an inch, but I'm not measuring. Then I remove the liner of my final piece of tape, once again, being consistent on the distance between the squares. Once the ribbon's on, I can train this to fold. So what I want is the inner squares to fold opposite to the outer ones. So the outer ones are going valley, mountain, valley, and the inner ones are going mountain, valley, mountain. And that way that first page will spin around and become the front of the album as well. And then I like to just open and close it a couple times, make sure that I really like the way it's looking and operating, and then I'll trim the ends of the ribbon into decorative fishtails. And then with my final three charms, I'm going to hang those off of the ribbon. So I need to make sure that I poke and enlarge a hole that's big enough to get that paper jump ring through. And then in this case, I want to seal my jump rings. So that means adding a spot of glue out on the end and then overlapping the two ends so that they will seal together and trap that charm on the ring and it can't fall off as you open and close the card. And then I just repeated that process to hang my other two charms. So I have the watermelon charm right here, and then back here between the pages two and three, I've got that final little donut charm. And then one last bit of decoration as I close it up, the front of the card was looking a little plain, so I decided to add a frame to the front and then a frame to the back. And then because it folds down into such a fun size little card, only three and a quarter inch square, it will fit nicely in an A2 envelope for mailing. Now it does have a little bulk to it, you'll probably need that extra ounce stamp. So these monthly videos are always meant just to inspire you with some new ideas for ways to get more mileage out of your die sets. For instance, taking our tiny accessories and using them to personify our charm sets. And of course, with or without personified popsicles, it's really cool just to alter the charm accordion and use it this way. In the description box below this YouTube video, you will find supply links as well as a link to the blog post. And on that blog post is where you will find even more inspiration for using the tiny accessories with all of the wonderful ideas made by our design team. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.